News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Live. It's a recording done earlier in deference to uh, my guest, uh, who of course is a veteran politician and actually um, the longest serving ever chairman of the Committee on Public Enterprise, popularly known as COPE. The, that's right, you heard it right. The longest serving chairman of COPE ever uh, since uh, COPE was started long years ago in the, um, under the administration of President J. R. J. R. Wardner. And of course, he's none other than Mr. Dew Gunasekra. Very good evening to you, Mr. Gunasekra, and thank you for coming on the program. After a long time. Morning, Father, I think. I must thank you for your kind kindness in inviting me to this program. We thought that as the longest serving COP <laughs> chairman ever, where you've, uh, during your tenure, you've investigated or looked into, I think that's a record on its own, 663 matters. Uh, in, and you're the only one to have served the full term. And you're also the only one who's represented both sides. You've been the head of uh, the chairman of COPE, both for the government of the day and the opposition. So that's marvelous. Yes. What do you make of what's going on in COPE now? There's grave unhappiness that Professor Charita Herat has uh, not been sort of invited back to COPE, and he, was, he appeared to be doing a great job. That is only a reflection of the infighting going on in Parliament. <laughs> oh, I see. So that, that's just that. It's not, not to do with the reflection on, uh, on the work that COPE does. No, no. And the reflection, the reflection of good governance. It's, I very, it, it's hardly good governance yeah. when, when you don't allow the committee to carry on doing some uh, very good, sterling and important work. The first time I heard that uh, regarding a uh, vote being taken to, to elect the chairman, mm -hmm. in my, to my knowledge, never in the history of parliament, I think from 1948 onwards, mm. well, there, uh, the voting taking place to, for the purpose of electing the chairman. Normally, the government and the opposition, before and they come to a sort of a consensus. And that has been the practice. Mm -hmm. Now, in I can remember when I was when President Mahinda Rajapaksa yeah. uh, invited me to take over. Then the, the finance secretary, the central bank governor, all said uh, things are not uh, doing well. Uh, there's no one to take this over. He invited me. Uh, then uh, the, and then of course they spoke to the opposition. Opposition really agreed. So it was a unanimous choice. So I had the strength and I got the cooperation, not the opposition, full cooperation. Mm -hmm. well, that's absolutely amazing. That, that should have been the spirit, I think, yes. of good governance. Well, so let's put the question the other way. The fact that there's all this infighting, very evidently, uh, a lot of infighting, does that mean that there are several cases that the government of the day don't really want to have investigated because it may be embarrassing in the least to them? No, there shouldn't be infighting at all as far as the, uh, the public finance is concerned. Mm. It had never been. Mm. I mean, uh, the, there have been, I mean, the, the, I was quite natural, the opposition of the government, the fight on and so But on the question of public finance come, they, they uh, so come to a sort of a compromise or even I best what is the consensus mm. with regard to these matters? So really, COPE should be... Because, the, you know, one of the primary functions of the member of parliament, yeah. there are four duties. Right. According to the standing orders. Okay. One. One is, is a legislator. Right. Right. Framer of policy, for law. Yeah. Legislation. Yeah. Second is formulation of policies. Right. Then the third is... Uh, the you know the people through the article 148 of the constitution 148 con the constitution empower the financial supervision only to the parliament yeah financial supervision is no undertaken by the judiciary or the executive and by the parliament only and the parliament yeah through the standing orders give the power to the cop and the cop 
elect the chairman and chairman behaves like a judge. Mm. You know, he has ought to be a judge. So, and, and, the four, and the fourth one? The uh, fourth one is representing the grievances of the people. Right. The grievances. That is the last. Right. But equally important. Equally important. In that case, you just mentioned something very interesting that the co chairman must act like a judge. Well, it had been the practice. I mean, there's a. I mean, it's a. I mean, well, what, do you mean, what do you mean by that? I mean, that means that, you know, immediately you sit on the, 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 the co uh, board. Yeah. Committee chairman. I mean, the people who are summoned are heads of departments yes. and secretaries. Um, they are the guardians of fi public finance, mm. right? And uh, so you must appear to be impartial. You must appear to be non-political. Uh, but appearances can be deceptive. That's not really what should be. Yeah, may be deceptive. I mean, I mean, after all, old people are. Mm. But you know, you are called upon. I mean, the people through the constitution, through the one four eight article constitution, empower that power to the MP to investigate is a custodian of public finance. Mm. So there's a huge new should not bring in party politics and other things uh, into that. So, so basically, you know, when you say that you must behave like a judge it, and judges uh, behave very impartially, devoid. And should not only behave, appear to be. At, appear to be as well <laughs> and actually do so. Yeah, they actually they, do so. They, they, are devoid of political ideology. Uh, do you think judges should vote at general elections? And yeah, yeah, I should. Certainly, that is a personal. Uh, right. But you must have. That's a, that's a right now. Yes, I know. But that also, again, the constitution gives them. Do, do you think that when but a judge votes. He, he, for, he did not express it to whom he voted. No, no, that's true. But in his mind, do you think his mind gets a bit sullied? when you vote for one party or the other, and if a matter comes up before him, no. then what? No, I, I think he can, he can choose the best person, suitable person, irrespective of party politics. Right. But ne never oh, otherwise, he refrain from voting, yeah. <laughs> if he can't take that decision. <laughs> mm. Yes. Well, OK, so, but that's very interesting. You need to be devoid of ideology, politics, and everything and stick with only one thing, okay. and the interest of the public, okay, the people, yeah, the people's yeah. interest. Now then, and as tradition goes, soon after the, uh, the throne speech, so to speak, um, do you then appoint the chairman of COPE? Or no. how long should you wait after the throne speech? Uh, after the throne, uh, parliament, new parliament is summoned. Yeah. Then the, the speaker, that is the duty of the speaker yeah. uh, to see that the, all the committees are uh, chairman are appointed. Yes. Elect, elect, uh, elect. What's the time gap between the throne? There's no, there's nothing stipulated. No, but what about the tradition? The tradition is, I mean, I mean, you elect the speaker first. Yeah. Then the, after the cabinet is formed, and then the, all the committees should be appointed. Where does the, where the, does the throne speech fit in? Throne speech comes in for the policy now, when the government... Yes, I know, but when? Gava, that is, when does it come? The, before the cabinet mem or after the cabinet? Members of the cabinet are selected. Yes. Then the new prime minister yes. or the president, whatever, now at the moment the president... President, yes. Is, couple, is called upon to come and make the... Now we don't call it throne speech, no, but no, it's okay. a but our, policy speech. Am I, I'm trying to find out yeah. when would tradition dictate that the chairman of COPE be appointed? That is the, at the stage of uh, selecting the uh, select committees and all other committees of the parliament. Hmm. This is one of the committee. The reason I'm asking that yeah. is, as you know, yeah. that it took several uh, several days uh, after the um, throne speech to appoint the chairman of COP this time round. That's why I'm asking, because it took a bit of time. Uh, the reason being, I don't know, no, no, no. Is the, it the invite? No, 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 you know, this this happened yeah. because the parliament was prorogue. Right. I mean, this this is the, this is another thing that I think. Uh, we should uh, amend the standing orders. Right. When the parliament is prorogued, immediately all the committees disappear. And all the work goes down the dustbin, basically. Yeah, that's right. Like, like what happened yeah. to you and the bond scam. Yeah, that, that's right. 
That, that is a dissolution. Yes. Here in this dissolution, this is a prorogue. prorogue. But the same effect. The effect is the same. Effect is the same. And what a colossal waste of That money. is why I have been, this is one of my, I have produced <coughs> six reports. Yes. During the time of the five years that I was uh, yes. chairman. Right. <laughs> I, in every report I have been consistently insisting that these standing orders need amendment. Right. Bring it up to date. Now, one of the things that I feel is that <clears throat> immediately after the parliament is prorogue, and prorogue is not changing of government, same government. Why should uh, the COP chairman be rem removed? And, why, sh and why should we ignore the um, good work then done the by that? Done. Yeah. All yeah. right, in that case, let's go for a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss several other aspects of COP, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Welcome back to Newsline and I'm in conversation with the veteran politician and the longest serving chairman of the Committee on Public Enterprise, COPE, the longest serving chairman ever um, and a record number of investigations done during that period, um, 663, Mr. Dew Gunasekra. Uh, welcome back. Mr. Gunasekra, why can't COPE, I mean, why can't COPE have a bit more bite to it? You know, you all investigate and so on. For example, look at what you did with the, with the bond scam, for example. You all reported and then they prorogued it, uh, or they dissolute, uh, there was a dissolution of parliament, then we started all over again. And it's almost as though the parliamentarians don't give too much thought to the people's need, the people's distress at this various corruption and other departures of due process. Why, why is that? Why can't we tighten up the whole process of COPE? Right. That is why in every report that I have submitted to the parliament yeah. and debated, I have been insisting again and again, over and over, that the standing orders should be amended in order to provide for what you now just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Give more powers to the COP. We are limited powers. We investigate and present the parliament, that's the end of it. Mm. But, I, but I have gone beyond that. Uh, I have done, when I come across any uh, corrupt practices, yes. uh, then I used to refer it to the CID or to the Primary Commission. I have done it. How did you do that? On what basis did you do that? No, I, I, I sent a, a, a COP report. Yeah. And uh, for necessary action, I sent it. That's all. But that's exactly what uh, Professor Charita Herat was trying to do, and Parliament shut him down. Why was that? He, so he didn't really need to ask par Parliament. He could have just sent it. Did you ask the sp uh, Speaker's permission to do that? I didn't. Have, I didn't ask anything. I used my discretion. You used your challenge. discretion? But it had been earlier, some, some of the presidents, uh, there was, chairman there was had a president. done it. Okay. Never had done it. Once I can remember the speaker, uh, I reported to the speaker, the, all the reports that are going to CID and the private commission, they don't respond. Hmm. Then they took up a position, then one day, with the Vijibu Lokumandara, he said, what can we do if they are not responding? I, I said, I'll then most, I give permission me to summon them and question as to why you don't respond. Right. And then, then what, what then did I, the speaker say then? I, I, no, I, I, then? After that, I acted on my own. Right. I wrote to the IG. I right. wrote to the private government. Did they act, though? Did they, they act? acted. And they sent me reports. <laughs> I say, you should, have, you should have been speaking to Professor Charita Herat then. <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Ginosekra, why can't we, as Professor Charita Herat uh, was trying to get Parliament to agree, why can't at the very least, the very least, why can't a representative of the Attorney General's department be present at these COP hearings? Uh, that, of course, by the outsiders are not permitted. Okay. Even ministers are not permitted. Why can't we amend the rules? That, that's why I stand, we we'll have to stick to this. That is, that's why I say, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's a parliamentary committee there. Then the parliamentary committee, the speaker should take an, uh, this is speaker's job, mm. if he's convinced, then discuss and 
explore the possibility of uh, making amendments or standing orders to as far as you know to give them more powers and uh, that is a, that is a no, the, no, the parliament must decide finally it should be approved by the whole, whole house indeed but it is always parliament must be acting ought to act and then should act and do the act. only yes. answer that can, that is the political culture in which we have created but the people's interest must come first that's right now, now then, Mr. Gunsekra, can I ask you this? In, you know, you're a veteran politician. It is, you are in, it is fair to say you're in your twilight years now. And as you, as you stand aside and you watch what is going on overall, you're looking at parliament, you're looking at governance, you're looking at the delivery to the people. When you look at all that, don't you think that Sri Lanka is missing one vital ingredient in the fight against corruption? A matter that even now the United Nations, in their resolution, they're mentioning economic crimes and the, and the IMF says structural reforms needed to address corruption. But don't you think, uh, Mr. Duke Gunasekra, that Sri Lanka needs laws to control political donations, election campaign funding, okay, that okay. sort of thing? <laughs> you know, the bribery and corruption is rampant throughout the world, yeah. in all the countries. Yeah. It's a matter of degree, it's a matter of that, right? Yeah. But, that, but, you know, I mean, now you take the our country, yeah. now, but we've hit rock it is bottom. on the increase, yeah. right? When now, 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 you'll have to analyze and find out what are the causes that have led to the, led the increase of the corruption, the, what are the causes? One is the... I, no. I give, that is my candid opinion, yeah. whether you accept or not. Yeah. Executive presidency is the one of the source of corruption. Too I, much power. I bold say, boldly say. So it's a wrong thing, we need to Both get rid executive, of it. Then you analyze what the executive, executive president becomes a member of the leader of the party. Right. Then the leader of the party, he will not be, he will not act, uh, act dispassionately. Elect partially with the whoever who comes into power. Yeah. That's why we tried that now. We made a non party man who we brought in. Yeah. Gotaway was not a member of the party. Yeah. He, he belongs to a, a so political a, family. You know, that, but that he was, was a, not a member of the party. Was that a spectacular failure? Huh? Was that a spectacular failure? Total fa dismal failure. Failure. Why, why, why do you think that was? Is that because no, he that was, was not a, political or was it no, incompetence? No, basically he was an army man. Yeah. That's right. Army tactics won't uh, uh, apply to the legislature. Uh, you know, the public interest is... Uh, now, how many times? I, I tell you, 2020, 2020, at the height of the second wave of the COVID, yeah. he summoned all the party leaders and all entire cabinet for mm. a meeting. There's the only one, the first and the last. Right. So I also went there. My party asked me to go, although I, I was not the general secretary. Yes. I also participated yes. along with my general secretary and the MP. Mm. And I, for two hours, we were discussing the COVID, right? Mm. Finally, at the, at the end, I told the president, President, will you permit me, give me two minutes, I want to speak. So he gave me. I said, we have a good health system. Our doctors are capable of controlling it. Mm. There's nothing to discuss about it so much for two, two, long, <laughs> two long hours. But, Mr. Your Excellency, we are, you, we are in for an impending economic crisis. I told him, please keep the people educated on that crisis. I told him, I mean, the entire cabinet is, will vouch for it. Because then over the older person, it, uh, the meeting was placed by Mahindra Rajabaksa. Mm. I'll tell him, get the MPs. MPs know nothing about this crisis. The nature of the crisis, the depth of the crisis, causes that lead to the crisis. Please give them, I said, three-day workshop for them. Educate them, put them into the field. If you do not do that, I'm a single and Kiwe, Obatumar Chandi do Natan Malak saying, Ekkenekat Obatumak in the Ghana, make an ogre. And it happened. Prophetic words. I told 2020, 
Oh, the witnesses are the entire cabinet. Witnesses are all the party leaders. And you wanted him to, to have a dialogue. Yeah, I told him on the day that he gave nomination. I was the person who received him in Mathura. Yeah. I had a meeting. About 5,000 people are there. I gave him a printed small leaf booklet. The impending crisis. I have mentioned that we are in for a dollar crisis. We are in for a rupee crisis. Because I have been in my career in the parliament for 13 budgets, debates I have participated in every budget. From Ronnie Dibel downwards, I was warning the government for impending crisis because the government revenue was dwindling from 24% of the GDP in 1978 to 6% in 2019. Under all dispensation, all, all under all presidents, it was going down. It was a wrong fiscal policy, macroeconomics. So I told him, I gave no, tense measures, immediate measures after you assume duties as president and gave it him in the presence of Mahindra Rajabaksa and in the presence of speaker, the present speaker. Did he, he, took, he received it? He received, I, and then I spoke, I explained him half an hour to the crowd. I spoke about the informal economy. I told, told him about the mother district. I said, public servants are only 14% of the works, workers, 26% of the private sector. The barracks, 60 to 70 percent of the informal economy. The mother risk you found most of the people are from the informal economy. Mm. In the impending crisis, they are the people who will get in affected. Today mm. it has happened, all small shops, everything, all are closed. So this is what, uh, this is what I what told. A, what, uh, <clears throat> would you agree, a colossal waste of an opportunity? Last, last opportunity. We are also, we are also on the fault because we thought he's a non-political non man. Well, not we only you, so not only you, 6.9 <laughs> million people. 6.9 million. <laughs> um, so what do you think, what do we need to fix Sri Lanka properly? How can we move forward? Do you think that the eradication of corruption, the addressing no, father, of that... The, the, the immediate problem is the, not the eradication of the crisis. I, got, I find that some of the political is, uh, I find some of the political leaders are taking that as the number one agenda. It's not that to get out of this crisis. What, what do you that, suggest? What is the first the first thing we ought to be doing? The first thing, the first thing, you won't get anything from the IMF. Yeah. You mark my words. Right. Most they gave that 2.9 billion, but they have they will already put forward conditions, right? Yeah. yeah. Because they have insisted, because foreign debt is about 52 billion. Yeah. Right? So they, have, they have mentioned not only foreign debt, the domestic debt is 15 trillion. Right? So they have put forward, you know, the, the Ali Sabri went and they explained all about the foreign debt. Yeah. But they, in turn, I mean, after all, after all they say, for dollar crisis is one. This is because they, normally in most of the countries where crisis have emerged, it was a case of foreign exchange crisis. Yeah. But we have another crisis, domestic, the rupee crisis. Because it burst because after that we were printing money, we have printed about, I think, about 5 trillion. Mm -hmm. or I think, I, I exact figure, I don't know. Okay. Now the central bank has put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. Now if you don't print, yeah. How to pay the public servants? Eighty <clears throat> percent of the budget goes to the payment of salaries and pensions. So that is another crisis. Not all the dollar crisis, the rupee crisis also there. So it's a, it's a so. So the, what do we suggest? What do we do? Increase the taxes, not the even more. No, increase the direct taxes. Ah. I tell you. Ronnie de Bell's first budget speech. I have read all of these things. In fact, I want to go and see the old man. Right. <laughs> he, 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 at that time, the highest bracket and in the, uh, the rate of in, uh, income tax uh, in the uh, bracket was 
సెవెంటీ పర్సెంట్ హైయెస్ట్ బ్రాగడ్ నా దట్ సెవెంటీ పర్సెంట్ నా దట్ టోటల్ ఇన్కమ్ బ్రాగడ్ జయా జాదన్ రెండు ఇమెయిల్ బ్రాట్ ఇట్ డౌన్ టు ఫిఫ్టీ ఫైవ్ వెల్ ఈస్ ఎ టూ మచ్ ప్రేమదాస్ బ్రాట్ ఇట్ డౌన్ టు ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ చంద్రిక బ్రాట్ ఇట్ డౌన్ టు థర్టీ ఫైవ్ మహీంద్ర రాజపక్స బ్రాట్ ఇట్ డౌన్ టు ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ ఎయిట్ ట్వంటీ ఎయిట్ సెకండ్ టర్మ్ హీ బ్రాట్ ఇట్ డౌన్ టు ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ బెసిల్ రాజపక్స బ్రాట్ ఇట్ డౌన్ టు ఫోర్టీన్ ఎంత ఉంద ఈ ఓ ద క్రైసిస్ సో ట్రెషర్ చేసేస్తున్నా మనీ Mm-hmm. And they instead what they do, they put the whole thing on the wet, throw wet and on the indirect tax. The entire population is paying tax, but the well, well-to-do people are not paying anything. I'm an ex-tax man. I know what is happening there. Would you describe the situation as sad? He said, not, I, I mean, not, not the superlative business, not even saddest. <laughs> Well, you know, Dugan Sekhar, uh, thank you for that. But whilst this is all going on, while Sri Lanka's government is juggling away, uh, trying to do governance, accountability issues in the United Nations, corruption, um, over 800,000 cases in the legal system that gets postponed, carried yeah, forward yeah. into the next year. Yeah. Whilst all this is going on, the people of Sri Lanka... especially out there they appear to be forgotten and the government the movement is out there for the sixth time in a in the decade that it's been in existence they've been going for the sixth time round door to door and our teams are in um, Jaffna in Martale and in the Kalutra uh, district and um, I spoke earlier to one of my wonderful colleagues out there in the uh, out in the field and it appears to me uh, from what they're telling me that the biggest problem is the lack of water and sometimes where there is no water when it rains it floods everything and even their wells on which they're so dependent gets contaminated so you know they'll be damned if they do and they'll be damned if they don't and that is the sorry state that the bulk of our people are experiencing is a lack of water and associated uh, matter. Tell the people the truth. First and thing, uh, uh, my colleague is, is just giving us a little update on what they've found out uh, in, uh, out there amongst the people. But thank you very much. And um, it's very sad about, about everything that's happening. But Duke Gunasekri, you're absolutely right. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. And... you going to say Chris, thank you very much not only by the government every political party every know, party some of the parties are there is a corruption man it's not a corruption corruption also emerges from the policy corruption. so you must tell the truth you must tell the truth tell the truth. people will stand by you do you going to say Chris, thank you very much and as we finish remember the wise words of uh, the veteran um, politician and the longest serving chairman of corp ever to have also served both in the opposition and in the government mr dugan sekra he says tell the people the truth everyone policy parties parliament tell the people the truth take care that is a de- that is democracy elementary democracy tell elementary the- democracy <laughs> take care and uh, as always god bless you all The word poverty is insufficient to describe the standard of living of the residents of Devalakanda Gammaneya in Millagas Udumulla Payagala. This is the plight of people living in the western province. Uh, this village is located in the Kaluthara district uh, and these people are living their lives in extreme poverty. Many of these families have more than one children and none of their parents have a proper form of employment uh, certain or some of their parents did have some form of employment but uh, many of them have lost their employment because of the covid-19 pandemic and most recently the economic crisis the future of the children here are extremely uncertain uh, as to the amount of meals that they eat per day that depends on how much work that they get we met a family who 
only got work once in the past week and they managed to only eat around one meal a day for that entire week. What will happen tomorrow? Nobody knows. This is the plight of people living right here uh, in the western province uh, that has much, much more developed areas, of course, uh, in certain areas like the Colombo district and other areas. But this too is a village situated in the western province. But these people, but the fate of these people is something that is very, very different.